And today we're taking a look at the second generation Moto E dual SIM card. This being a budget phone and keeping costs down, this phone is made of plastic. Even though we have a low resolution screen at 540 by 960, which is quad HD, which only equals 245 pixels per inch at 4.5 inches, it's not a bad screen to look at. This is an IPS LCD screen and protecting that screen is a Corning Gorilla Glass 3. And powering this bad boy, we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 410, a quad core 1.2 gigahertz Cortex A50 and packing an Adreno 306. We have a 5 megapixel camera at f2.2. We have autofocus. We get our standard 3.5 headset jack. Another downside to the Moto E is that it does not have a flash. It only records at 720p and its front facing camera is barely survivable. Looking at the front of the phone, it also provides you with front facing speakers, which is a definite plus. This phone does use standard micro USB. One great feature that Motorola provides provides is the Moto app which provides you the Moto Assist that it adjusts automatically to how you use the phone and notifications at a glance will provide you the ability to look at notifications without having to unlock your phone and Moto Action provides you the ability to quickly shake your phone and get the camera app open from the lock and off screen and if you shake the phone again meanwhile the app is open you could switch in and between cameras. One of the downsides and common things about Motorola phones is that the battery is non-removable. And this phone is packing a 2390 milliamp battery, which is very good for its size. Another plus is we have a dedicated micro SD slot, which is capable of holding a 32 gig memory card. This is a GSM phone, so that does mean it does require a SIM card. And we do have two slots for that. And they're both micro SIM. This phone was announced and released on March of 2015. As of now, it's packing Android Lollipop. Once we get to the camera, we get our HDR mode. One of the great things, we can control exposure and focus. And that's great because you can have more control of the pictures you take. One additional plus, we do have FM radio. And that works by using the headset cable as an antenna. We do have the usual suspects as Bluetooth and GPS. We have 8 gigs of internal storage with 4 dedicated to Android. We have one gigabyte of RAM. Even though it has a low megapixel camera, it does provide decent pictures. The screen is nice to look at and it has a nice design. Overall, it's a very responsive phone. It's a great compact phone on a budget with good quality. Don't forget, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching. And here's a link to our last video. <laughs>